What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you this amazing software called ShapeSpark. It's designed to be a communication and presentation tool for architects. So this tool allows you to take uh, basically a project, a 3D model from uh, one of the common 3D modeling softwares like Maya, 3ds Max, SketchUp, many more. But of course, in today's uh, tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use Revit in collaboration with ShapeSpark. So I'm going to be showing you how to uh, use this cool little plugin to export your model from Revit. So your house exported it from Revit into ShapeSpark. And then uh, what ShapeSpark allows you to do is to first it has a lot of tools for uh, playing around with your model, editing it uh, and making some little uh, tweaks and so on. Uh, but finally it allows you to bake it and make it a uh, fairly, fairly realistic walk through scene with uh, accurate lighting and reflections which you can send to pretty much anybody in the world and they can view it without installing any additional software on their device just via a web browser so just open it up in their web browser and they can view it either on their desktop mobile or even vr so it's really really cool it's really high tech and I, I think you're going really going to like it. And I'm going to be showing you uh, towards the end of this tutorial how I'm going to email this uh, model that I uh, created in the ShapeSpark and I'm just going to send it to my smartphone and I'm just going to be showing you how to how you can look over that model and how, uh, how really useful it can be for sending these uh, interactive uh, walkthroughs to your, to your clients, maybe professors, uh, maybe just other architects, just your colleagues or something like that. So that's what we're going to be covering in today's video. And of course, if you're interested, I'm going to be leaving links in the description of this video. So just below the video, uh, check out the description and uh, you can uh, find the, the website and of course, uh, download this uh, cool piece of software. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So this is the project that they chose for this demonstration and this is the model that we're uh, going to be exporting into ShapeSpark. Uh, so the first thing that we have to do is of course download the ShapeSpark add-in. It's very simple and straightforward. Just a few steps. Uh, the link is going to be included in the description. You go on their website, you download it, you install it. Uh, as I said, just a few steps and you're done. Uh, now you do have to have the ShapeSpark running in the background. So as you can see here, I do have it opened up so we do have to have that and uh, once we have uh, ShapeSpark opened up and Revit opened up now we can export our project uh, so it's simply by going here to the add-ins tab and there we have our ShapeSpark add-in and if I just click here on export it's going to give us a little menu and it says export to ShapeSpark uh, now here uh, you have to first choose the export type it can either be an update to an existing scene or in this case because we don't really have any scenes uh, we're creating a new one one. I'm just going to go here to create a new scene uh, and then also here we can name it I, I'm just going to call it shape spark uh, a test kitchen that's okay and the level of detail of course if you wanted to have it more detailed uh, crank this up if you want less detail but perhaps better performance uh, then dial it down just like anything uh, on your computer also, you can include your son. Uh, now, the, the, this can be a smart move, especially if you have your orientation of the project already created and set up. This is going to allow you to have a more accurate, uh, a, a, a more accurate uh, uh, presentation. So you just simply click here, OK. It's going to run for a few moments to export that file or that model into uh, from Revit into ShapeSpark. So just give it a, a few moments and we're done. So now we can move to ShapeSpark. So as you can see, it says export finished. We can close this off. And now when we open up ShapeSpark, we have our uh, ShapeSpark test kitchen uh, file over here. Uh, now here you can also see this example room uh, and it does look really nice and elegant and rendered and everything. Uh, so this is something that that you get with the ShapeSpark uh, program. So uh, this is something that uh, already exists. So this is a file that you can kind of look around, test everything out, play around with it. So uh, it's a really useful uh, thing that that you get. But uh, because we're working on our own file, let's just go here into edit and that's going to open our, our file here in ShapeSpark. I'm just going to close this uh, quick uh, pop out and here we go. We're inside of our project. 
Uh, now this software is fairly uh, straightforward and easy to use. It's quite uh, intuitive. So we're going to be covering all of these tools that we have over here, all of these little tabs. But first, let's get started with navigation. So for navigation, if you just uh, click and hold your left mouse button, it's going to allow you to kind of look around, uh, just like if you were in one of those uh, first person shooter games or something like that, uh, it allows you to kind of navigate and uh, look around. Also, you can use either the arrow key to go back and forth or uh, just to kind of uh, look left or right and uh, also you can use the W and S as well for back and forth as well as A and D for going uh, left and right and uh, finally we have the Q for going down and then the E button for going up so changing your height basically uh, now uh, if it's kind of hard to follow at first don't worry about it here we have this little question mark and if we click on that here we have the basic navigation and also we have the advanced navigation so everything is going to be laid out here so you can check it out at any point if necessary now, once we've covered the navigation, let's take a look at creating views. So here on the viewer tab, so that's the, the last tab over here, uh, we have the ability to create views. So let's see how something like that is done. Uh, so here uh, on the views, we have this little view panel and there we have the option to add a walk view top view as well as the orbit view and those are well exactly as they sound so the walk view is something like a human perspective something that we have over here so to create a walk view what you want to do is to position yourself uh, in a place where you're kind of happy with the, the with the way everything looks we're looking at the kitchen here I, I'm qu quite happy with this maybe I want to keep this later on for renderings or so on and uh, once I'm happy with this, this is obviously a walking view. So I can just click here to on plus and that's going to create a new view. We can also change its name so we can say that this is a kitchen a kitchen view or something like that. And there we go. We have our kitchen. Uh, also, uh, we can create a orbit view. So if I move to orbit, it's going to look kind of odd. And if I just zoom out enough, you're going to see that the navigation changes. And now as we move the mouse around, it's going to orbit the whole building. Maybe zoom out a little bit. And there we go. And this is, well, this is exactly how it sounds as well. This is for viewing your uh, building from the outside, orbiting around, taking a look from different angles, perspectives, and so on. Uh, uh, so this is your uh, so this is your orbit view and if you're happy uh, at any time if you're happy with a new position you can always go here to camera orientation and just set this as current and there we go so now if we just click here on this view it's going to pan back around to that uh, previously saved camera orientation and also we can uh, name it here maybe we can call this one the orbit view there we go and of course we have the top view so this is just looking at the building from the top now uh, at first this might look odd uh, especially because you you can't really see much at, uh, uh, inside of the building here we only see the roof uh, but what's really good about this view is if you go here to the objects tab and what I can simply do is uh, just scroll down over here and here we have the option to custom hide in views so if you turn that on you get this little menu and you can choose in which views it's going to be uh, hidden so I, I think this is the, the our top uh, down view and now if we go back to the viewer as you can see now that roof is gone and we can see inside of the building and of course you can go even further selecting all of these walls and getting rid of those in order to show the ground uh, the ground floor so uh, that's a really uh, useful feature of this viewer and we can always go back to all of uh, the rest of our views that uh, we have already set up. So uh, let's go back here to our uh, kitchen. Uh, so the next thing that I would like to cover are the lights. So when you go here to the lights, uh, it's uh, going to show you all of the lights that have been used uh, inside of your uh, project. So here, as you can see, it's listing out all of the lights. And these are the lights, uh, light families. So we have, of course, one sun. Uh, that's okay. But the next, we have this micro S light. That's this light over here. And we have three instances of that. And you can see it here in the instances. So this is the family. These are the family instances. So that's really useful, the, the way that they laid everything out like this. And next, we have this, uh, I call it the one LED. That's uh, a light strip that I have over here. And as you can see, because it's a light strip, 
it has a lot of these little uh, individual lights so you can kind of go around and select all of those uh, you also have the ability to create new ones so if you go here and create a new spotlight if we just go see see as you can see here it's placed a new spotlight and then we can move it around and place it anywhere where we might like to place this light so perhaps I want to place it here in the refrigerator uh, you know here where it where you have the option to, to have I don't know cold water or ice I can add a little light there to kind of light up your cup if that's something that you're interested in <laughs> so anyways as you can see here we can just create a whole new light uh, all inside of shapes park which is really really useful uh, next we have these light probes now uh, what light probes are it's it's these things here uh, they are used in order to help kind of uh, calculate all of the light and reflections inside of the inside of different rooms and uh, by default shape spark is going to try to place one in each room each area of the of your building uh, but if it doesn't by any chance uh, just go here click this add button and it's going to create a new one and then place it uh, in that building which is of course uh, really useful uh, moving on here we have the materials uh, so for the materials uh, it's really useful because you can uh, go ahead and just select individual items and it's going to highlight everything that uses that material so if I click here on this refrigerator as you can see a refrigerator the dishwasher as well as this little uh, wine cooler uh, all uh, highlight so uh, what this allows me to do is to find this material here in the material browser but it also allows me to change that material so for example we can play around with the opacity roughness metallic and also we can change the color so I can uh, go here to uh, edit the, the, the uh, this solid color if I want or I can uh, make some changes so if I just uh, uncheck this so uh, make it not linked I can move this down and make everything darker so if I want to have some maybe darker reflective uh, metal material for this refrigerator and the rest of these I can and I think this looks a little bit better with this dark kitchen design I think it's uh, a bit better Okay, and uh, finally, let's go back here to the uh, bake uh, section. Now, bake or baking is used to simulate lighting for entire scene and save the result of the simulation uh, in the form of so-called light maps. Uh, now, as a uh, result, time-consuming uh, light simulation does not have to be performed while the scene is being watched. So, it's uh, a very efficient uh, equipment is not required. Uh, so, for example, it can be viewed on an average laptop or smartphone and that will be uh, more than enough. So baking adds uh, lighting to the scene, uh, uh, but it's not used for exporting from the scene. We can upload the, the, the scene later on, and that's what I'm going to be showing you after this. Uh, now first, uh, just for baking here, it's uh, fairly simple and straightforward as the rest of the software. So we have this uh, panel here that has uh, the path uh, uh, tracing we can set the quality here to uh, whichever we want uh, we can we have some additional settings uh, one of the settings here is for example the device uh, now it can use the, uh, the the CPU or it can use your graphics card in order to bake the scene uh, now uh, if you have a uh, a good separate uh, graphics card it may be uh, more efficient to bake the scene than by using your CPU so just keep that in mind and also just to make sure that all of the lighting is correct for your scene you do have the preview option which if I just click here it allows us to well just uh, preview bake the scene so as you can see here that's what's happening if I scroll down a little bit here we go as you can see it's just rendering and this is quite quick and it just gives you the kind of the result just so you can see here uh, as you can see we see the lighting as we see it's exactly what we want and once we're happy with that we can uh, cancel out of this and then we can get back and click here bake and that's going to start the baking process so let's go with that and this is the result that we can get so uh, unlike the Revit rendering here once our model is baked uh, we can not only see the kind of the, the the one frame but we can actually look around and of course not only that but we can move around so uh, it looks like it's kind of rendered at all possible angles 
or of course the scene has been baked so that means that you can move around and everything is going to have that perfect presentation so you can find uh, some nice views you can uh, walk around to just see how the whole project would feel uh, when built in real life so this is something that uh, Revit just cannot offer now of course another thing that's uh, truly amazing about this software and let's first save this uh, before that and then what I'm going to do is uh, go here and close out this scene and go uh, back here into ShapeSpark, the, the, the kind of the, the home page and here we have that test kitchen that we have created and let's say you want to send this to somebody else maybe your client your colleague professor doesn't really matter anyone uh, anywhere in the world and you want to send them this file but of course they don't have uh, ShapeSpark installed on their computer or their smartphone well it's actually uh, available uh, to upload this and then it's going to upload it uh, uh, and you, you're going to get a link which you can send to anyone anywhere in the world and just using this link through a web browser they can view your model so that's the next thing that I'm going to be showing you so as soon as this uploads we're going to uh, get a link which we can copy uh, and email it to somebody and anyone that opens it up so here's the link as you can see uh, so we can uh, just uh, uh, copy that link so just like this and I'm actually going to mail it to my own uh, uh, smartphone and then we can see what that looks like and let me show you now on my smartphone what that looks like so I'm just going to open up this link that they've emailed myself click here on this play button which will kind of load in the, the scene and now we can basically look around so as you can see you can navigate through the screen as uh, just as on your computer you can just tap and then you will basically move to that direction which is really cool it's really easy and simple to kind of navigate around for example if I want to kind of view that this from afar I can move here take a look at these chairs take a look back at what the kitchen looks like and so on so it's a really cool way of navigating here as you can see we have the kitchen view so it remembers all of the views we have our orbiting view which allows us to well orbit around the building and then we should also have here the oops I can close it down so here it is okay and here we have this top-down view that kind of looks into the building but we haven't really set that up so let's not bother with that and also you have this cool little VR button which will you know, uh, tell you that you should put your phone into this uh, cardboard viewer now if you have that it's amazing so basically if I just turn my phone like this horizontally as you can see it, it, it kind of adapts to that viewer and then as you look around you can see your project which is really amazing so uh, if you have this that would be really really cool and of course let's go back to just the, the kitchen view there we go so that's how you can use this on your phone and as you can see you can email this to anyone no software no apps nothing is required you just open it up in the web browser and you can look around which is really really cool Okay, so there you go. That's uh, ShapeSpark and that is a quick little overview of some of the important features, uh, settings and functions that this software has to offer and how it's uh, meant to be used. So uh, tell me please in the comment section below the video, what do you think about this? Is this something that you would like to use in your uh, workflow, in your project? Is this something that you find useful? for communicating with your clients and so on, especially in today's era where everything is supposed to be wireless and we're supposed to do everything uh, kind of from a distance, uh, this can be an amazing tool. So uh, tell me what you think. As I said, links are in the description just below the video, so check it out. Uh, you can get this software today. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this quick little tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video, and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a few days. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.